desire to pursue things and to create more of oneself and uh, as a species, whether or not you decide to have kids or not, those circuits all use the one universal currency, dopamine, of wanting more things that are outside the confines of your skin. And that's what's driven forward evolution of individuals and families and cultures and our, our species as, as a whole. And again, the circuitry has been there for many, many tens, if not hundreds of thousands of years. And so it's, and it's highly conserved. And so what that means is that it doesn't matter if it's Bitcoin or Ethereum. It doesn't matter if it's putting rockets on other planets. It doesn't matter if it's building the first automobile. It's the same currency. So understanding those cycles is really key. The other thing is the element of pain. I think that understanding that pain and pleasure are in this really dynamic balance can also help us which in the following way. Any pain that you feel, the longer day, the less sleep, the, the kind of agony that things aren't working, that power outlet doesn't work, or the internet is slow, whatever it is, the amount of pleasure that you will eventually experience is directly rela related, excuse me, to how much pain you experience. So when you start a company down in the dregs and you're shoveling again, that's beautiful because that means that the win that you achieve is going to be as good or greater than the one you had previously, in your case with Quest. And so we go back to this example of the person that's not motivated, that can't get off the couch, that doesn't want to do anything. Well, this is the problem. We Remember the rat experiment? They are effectively the rat with no dopamine, but they can still achieve some sense of pleasure by consuming excess calories, by consuming social media. And look, I'm not judging, I do this stuff too, right? scrolling social media. If you've ever scrolled social media and you're like, I don't even know why I'm doing this. It doesn't really feel that good. And I can remember a time where you'd see something that was just so cool or you'd see something online. I remember this when TED Talks first came out. I was like, this is amazing. Mm. These are some, you know, at least some of them are really smart people sharing really cool insights. And then now that they're like a gazillion TED Talks, I remember spending a winter in my office at when I was a junior professor cleaning my office finally and binging TED Talks in the background, thinking this is a good use of my time. Pretty soon, they all sucked to me. I was like, this isn't good. So what you need to do is stop watching TED Talks for a while, wait, and then they become interesting again. And that's this pain pleasure balance. And so for people that aren't feeling motivated, the problem is they're not motivated, but they're getting just enough or excess sustenance. So they're getting the little mild hits of opioid, it becomes an opioid system. And if you think about the opioid drugs as opposed to dopaminergic drugs, dopaminergic drugs make people rabid for everything. You know, drugs of abuse like cocaine and amphetamine make people incredibly outward directed. Right? They hardly notice anything except what they want more of, more, 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 more. It's very, it's bad because those drugs trigger so much dopamine release that they become the reward. It's very circular. The, only the drug can give that much dopamine. Nothing they could pursue would give them as much dopamine as the drug itself. So. There's that, and then there's the kind of opioid-like effects of constantly indulging oneself with social media or with video games or with, uh, with food or with anything to the point where it no longer evokes the motivation and craving. And this is really the new evolution of the understanding of, of dopamine in, neuro, in neuroscience, which is that dopamine itself is not the reward. It's the buildup to the reward. And the reward has more of a kind of opioid bliss-like property, which itself is not bad, if it's endogenous, released from within, but when we can just sit there like the, like the rat with no dopamine, gorging ourselves with pleasures, so to speak, what you end up with is somebody that feels really unmotivated and those pleasures no longer work to tickle those feel good circuits. And so there's no reason for them to go out and pursue anything. And that's a pretty dark picture. So the, the keys are to pursue rewards, but understand that the pursuit is actually the reward if you want to have repeated wins. Okay. You, the celebration has to be less than the pursuit. And that's hard for some people to do. They, you know, they, it's got to be that your celebration is slightly less dopaminergic. It can be very reflective. You can be in gratitude. Those are other neurotransmitter systems, but you don't want to be on that high as you celebrate the win. The problem is that pleasure experienced without prior requirement for pursuit yes. is terrible for us. It's terrible for us as individuals. It's terrible for us as, as groups. And I, I have great confidence in the human species to work this out, but we are finding now, and we are going to increasingly find that those who will be successful, young or old, are going to be those people who can create their own internal 
buffers. They're going to be able to control their relationship to pleasures because the proximity to pleasures and the availability is the problem. If you look at the increase in uh, use of uh, drugs of abuse or prescription medication, which at least at the first pass delivered pleasure, pain relief, the whole issue with the opioid crisis and, and dopaminergic drugs like Ritalin, Adderall, you know, there is sometimes is a clinical need, but tons of people are taking those recreationally now or to study. Huge dopamine increases are what those cause. That is a problem. That's a serious problem because it creates a cycle where you, you need more of that specific thing. I would say addiction is a progressive narrowing of the things that bring you pleasure. A good life, we could say, is a progressive expansion of the things that bring you pleasure. And even better, is a good life is a progressive expansion of the things that bring you pleasure and includes pleasure through motivation and hard work. And understanding this pain-pleasure balance whereby if you experience pain and you can continue to be in that friction and, and exert effort, the rewards are that much greater when they arrive. And so, I think that if you look at any drug of abuse or any situation where somebody isn't motivated or thinks, that, now they may have clinically diagnosed attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, but a lot of what people think is ADHD, it turns out, is people just over consuming dopamine from various sources. And then, and also the context within a, a TikTok feed is the context switch is insane. The brain has never seen, first of all, this is the first time in human evolution that we wrote with our thumbs, but that's a pretty benign shift. And then the other shift is normally you walk from one room to another or from a field into the trees or from a hut into or a house or whatever it is. But now you can get 10,000 context switches in that 30 minutes of scrolling on Instagram or TikTok. And so it's all about self-regulation. We are going to select for the people that can self-regulate. And so then people say, well, how do you self-regulate? How do kids self-regulate? Well, this is my hope. And one of the reasons I've gotten excited about public education and teaching neuroscience is that this is a place where knowledge of knowledge actually can allow oneself to intervene. When you think, I'm feeling low, I don't feel good, nothing really feels like good, am I depressed? Maybe, but maybe you're just, you've saturated the dopamine circuits, you're now in the pain part of things, what do you do? Well, you have to stop, you need, you need to replenish dopamine, you need to stop engaging with this behavior, and then your pleasure for it will come back. But you have to constantly control the hinge. It's not just about being back and forth on the seesaw. You have to make sure the hinge doesn't get stuck in pain or in pleasure. So it's a, it's a dynamic process being a, a human being. It's not easy. And remember, these circuits didn't evolve for this purpose. They, they evolved primarily for making more of ourselves. That's why they're so closely tied to the reproductive circuits. And that's why it was interesting and very relevant that you said that your desire to have sex with your wife is one of the most powerful feelings and it kind of as a from a neurochemical perspective it wicks out into all these other pursuits right those other pursuits aren't about sex per se but it's the same molecule so the feeling is the same it's just that some people for some people the amplitude of that dopamine si signal for craving sex is very high for some people that's lower and it's higher for um, video games you know whatever you lean into and and you think about often in th these pursuits will start to reshape these circuits because these dopaminergic circuits are tied to everything. Uh, you know, there are examples of people getting addicted to the most incredible things. There are also examples of people getting very good but not addicted to chess, for instance. It's all the same general set of mechanisms.